dear all the viewers welcome to my channel royal zenith it's me goddess tammy today in this video i am going to solve the question paper of class 12 optional english which was asked in board exam in the year 2079 before beginning this video i request you to subscribe my channel and share the video among your friends or students to whom it may be very useful for more videos of class 12 optional english you can go to my channel and there is a playlist of class 12 optional english and play the video of your choice one a language family is i a group of related languages derived from a single language e derived from all languages e that can be divided into groups of languages iv part of the indo-european family correct option i 2 the tibeto-burman group of language falls i under indo-european language family e under austro-asiatic language family e under kamali languages iv under sino-tibetan family Correct option, IV. 3. Language shift is also. I. The cause of language death. E. The cause of language growth. E. The cause of monolithic language. IV. The cause of language of survive. Correct option, I. 4. The king of Banyan deer goes himself moves with pity and. I compassion to a pregnant deer e compassion to the king e compassion to all living beings iv kindness to the world correct option i 5 odin is known for his i personal benefit e eight-legged steed e sacrifice for the donation of his right eye for gaining wisdom iv Golden armor. Correct option, E. 6. Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for I. 27 years, E. 30 years, E. 90 years, IV. 17 years. Correct option, I. 7. Elegy is notable in that it I. Mourns the loss of a way of life, E mourns the loss of an individual e mourns the death of an author iv mourns the wealth of an author correct option i 8 why does the king give his kingdom to two evil daughters but not to the youngest one it is because i the two really love him e the two flattered him e he could not understand the true love of his youngest daughter. IV. The youngest does not love him. Correct option. E. 9. A tragedy is a serious play in which the chief figures pass through a series of I. Killing events. E. Separations of incidents. E. Misfortunes leading to a final devastating catastrophe. IV pain and loss. Correct option, E. 10. The characters in the play, All My Sons, are concerned with I. The business of an individual. E. The successful operation of the business. E. The establishment of business. I. V. The establishment and maintenance of family life. Correct option, I. V. 11. New criticism aims at providing good sense of I. A text which is totally new in nature. E. A text without going back to the history of the text and its author. E. A text that completes all genres. I. V. A text with full criticism. Correct option is E. 12. Group B write short answers to these questions. 8 into 5 equals 40. 12. Write in brief about the shift in language. Answer. Language shift is the replacement of one language by another. 
It is a process whereby a speech community shifts to a different language, usually over time. It is also known as language transfer, language replacement or language assimilation. Language shift takes place when a speech community comes in contact of a new language and gradually stops speaking their mother tongue and starts speaking the new language. It takes place when a community gives up its mother tongue in favor of another language. At present many people are speaking Nepali language leaving their indigenous language. Their next generation will be unable to speak their indigenous language. As a result, many indigenous languages will die. Hence, language shift must be stopped to stop language death. Linguistic awareness should be created. Special programs should be launched to save endangered languages. 13. What are the similarities between Pidgin and Creole? Give some examples. Answer. When the people of different linguistic backgrounds need the common means of communication, they borrow words from different languages. As a result, a new language originates called Pidgin. It has no native speakers. When the children of Pidgin speakers speak Pidgin as their mother tongue, it gains native speakers and it becomes Creole language. It becomes the mother tongue of those children. Creole is the developed stage of Pidgin. Similarities between Pidgin and Creole are as follows, i. Both Pidgin and Creole are the result of the mixture of two or more languages. e. Both are the result of multilingual situation. e. Both of them borrow words vocabulary from other languages. iv. Pidgin is the base for Creole development. Some examples of Pidgin Creole languages are, African American Vernacular English, Hawaiian Creole English, Luciana Creole, Chavacano Creole, etc. Question number 14. What was the new king fond of? Buddhist story. Answer. Brahmadatta was the new king of Benares Kashi. He was fond of hunting and having deer meat. He used to go hunting for pleasure. He used to go to the forest with his courtiers and helpers. He made the villagers accompany him and his hunting parties. He forced the villagers to help him in his royal hunt. Due to King's hunt, farmers' crops were destroyed. Businessmen could not conduct their word because they were forced to chase animals for the king to hunt. So, they were unhappy with the new king. At last, Brahmadatta gives up hunting after learning the lesson of compassion of pity from the Banyan deer king. 15. How is Sir Roger an esteemed person, according to Richard Steele? Sir Roger at the Assizes. Answer, according to Richard Steele, Sir Roger is a esteemed person. He is a kind, gentle, humble and mild man with peace of mind. He is loved and esteemed, respected in his neighborhood. He is a good old knight. He is a benevolent person. He avoids being criticized for the sake of mental peace. As a result, he doesn't even tell the truth and give fair opinion or verdict when people require it. He doesn't displease anyone. He wants to impress others and maintain his fame in the society. In fact, he is the person who doesn't hurt anyone. Question number 16. Why does Mimir ask for the right eye from Odin all father? Norse mythology. Answer. According to Norse mythology, Mimir was the guardian and caretaker of the Well of Wisdom. It was also called Mimir's well. This well was located under the root of Yudrasil tree. If one drank a draught of water from this well, s he could become wise. S he could know all the future. So, everybody who wanted to drink water from his well had to pay the terrible price. When Odin All Father goes to drink water from Mimir's well, Mimir asks the price to be paid for the water of wisdom. Mimir asks Odin's right eye as the price of wisdom. Odin also happily donates his right eye for the sake of valuable wisdom. Let's go to question number 17. How is Elizabethan sonnet different from Petrarchan sonnet? What are their rhyme scheme? Answer, sonnet is a 14-line poem written in iambic pentameter. There are two types of sonnet, a Italian or Petrarchan sonnet it originated in Italy. It was popularized by an Italian poet Petrarch. b English or Shakespearean or Elizabethan sonnet it originated in England. Sir Thomas Wyatt, Henry Howard and Earl of Surrey introduced sonnet in English but William Shakespeare popularized it. Difference between Elizabethan sonnet and Petrarchan sonnet is given below. 1. Petrarchan sonnet originated in Italy but Elizabethan sonnet originated in England. 2. Petrarchan sonnet is also called Italian sonnet. Whereas Elizabethan sonnet is also called Shakespearean or English sonnet. 3. Petrarchan sonnet has two stanzas, octave and sestet. On the other hand Elizabethan sonnet has three quatrains and a couplet. 4. The rhyme scheme of Petrarchan sonnet is ABBA ABBA in octave and CDE CDE in sestet. But the rhyme scheme of Elizabethan sonnet is ABAB. CDCD, EFEF, GG, 5.
5. In Petrarch and Sonnet, Octave asks problem or question and Sestet gives solution. On the other hand, in Elizabethan Sonnet, three quatrains present the theme and a couplet provides solution or conclusion. Now, question number 18. Write in short on formalistic perspective. Answer, formalist perspective is one of the lens to look at the literary text. It analyzes, interprets or evaluates the inherent features of a text. It focuses on the form of the literary text. It ignores its meaning. It studies literary devices such as rhyme, rhythm, meter, figures of speech, syntax, narrative technique, setting, characters, plot, tone, theme, mood, style, etc. It ignores the historical context of the text and background of the author and readers. It focuses on form, not on the content. It studies the aesthetic qualities of the text. For example, it does not focus on what the poem is about. It focuses on how it is written, what are the literary devices used, etc. It believes that the language of literature should be different from everyday language. Literary language should have literariness. Defamiliarization, de-automatizing, foregrounding and backgrounding are the major devices of formalists. Formalists believe that if the language of literature is ordinary, no one will pay attention to it. So, there should be literariness. Weakness of this perspective is that it is applicable only in poetry not in other genres. Viktor Shkovsky, Roman Jacobson, Jan Mukarovsky, etc. are the formalist critics. Now question number 19. Define subaltern literature in brief. Answer. The word subaltern means lower or inferior in rank. A subaltern marginalized person is someone with a low ranking in a social, economic, political or other hierarchy. It also means someone who has been oppressed or marginalized. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersexual, backward people, AIDS victims, black people, colonized, poor class people, etc. are the subalterns. In the context of Nepal, Madhesi, Muslims, women, Dalits, indigenous people such as Rote, Chapang, Kusunda, LGBTIs, people of Karnali region, etc. were regarded as subalterns in the past. But the constitutional provision and other government programs have slowly uplifted their status now. Definition of subalterns changes according to time and space because subalterns always don't remain subalterns. Subaltern literature refers literary writings which present the pain, hardships, struggle, exploitation and suppression of subalterns. It raises the voice of subalterns and marginalized people. It supports for their rights. It aims to break the hegemony of the elite people. It aims to eliminate all kinds of discrimination and exploitation. For example, the story Deal in the Wheat can be regarded as subaltern writing because it shows the hardships faced by a farmer. In Nepal too, many writers and poets have written against caste discrimination, gender discrimination, struggle of the poor class and so on. All of them come under subaltern literature. Now group C. Write long answers to these questions. 3 into 8 is equal to 24 marks. 20. What are the reasons for Paul for committing suicide? Why does he take such hard decision? Paul's case, answer, Paul's case is a short story written by an American writer Willa Cather. It is about a teenager schoolboy named Paul who is disappointed with his monotonous life, loves his job at a theater, wants to be part of it, steals money, enjoys in New York for a week, and ends his life by jumping in front of a moving train. According to his teachers, Paul was an abnormal boy. He did not have good relationship with his father. His mother had died briefly after giving him birth. He was suspended from his school due to his abnormal and unsound behavior towards his teachers. He told his friends about his fake connection with actors and actresses of the theater. As a result, he was expelled from his school and dismissed from the job of an usher at the theater. He did not like the street where he lived. He was fed up with his school as well as home environment. Paul wanted to live a fancy and luxurious life. He daydreamed of living a luxurious life like celebrities. Once his office told him to deposit $1,000 at the bank, he stole that money and ran to New York. He enjoyed sightseeing, night walking, lavish meal and expensive clothes there. When the newspaper published about his theft, he was frightened. His father had already compensated the stolen amount but he was in search of his son. After spending a week in New York, he decided to return to his home. He took the train to Newark, rode a taxi, and got off. He heard the sound of approaching, coming train and jumped in front of it and ended his life than to return to his old boring life. Paul took hard decision of committing suicide because he was fed up with monotonous life. When this desire of his couldn't be fulfilled, he committed suicide. 
his high ambition for the glamorous life was the cause of his suicide. 21. Summarize the poem, No Second Troy. Answer. No Second Troy, is a lyric poem composed by an Irish poet W.B. Yeats. This poem is the combination of personal and political concerns. It is one of the great love stories of the 20th century. In this poem, the poet blames Mordgon for filling his life with misery and teaching the innocent Irish people violent ways of revolution. The speaker of this poem is poet himself. The addressee, listener is Maud Gon, the devastatingly beautiful Irish actress and revolutionary leader. Yeats had proposed her, Maud Gon, for marriage several times but she married another man rejecting his proposal. Yeats wrote this poem after her final rejection. Title of this poem is symbolic. Troy was the ancient city, now in Turkey, which was destroyed due to ten-year-long war for the sake of a beautiful woman named Helen. Helen was kidnapped by the Prince of Troy, Paris. Helen's husband Menelaus, King of Greece, fought war against Paris for ten years to bring her back. Finally, he was successful in his mission but the city of Troy was destroyed completely. Hence, Troy is the symbol of destruction. The poem begins with a rhetorical question. The poet says that he, I, of the poem, should not blame her, Maud Gon, for filling his life with misery. The poet is unhappy that Maud Gon did not respond to his love but he argues that he should not blame her for giving pain. He says he should not blame her for teaching innocent Irish people the violent methods to get freedom from Britain. The poet thinks that poor and innocent people did not have enough courage and desire to revolt against the British rulers. It was Maud Gon who inspired them to do so. Yeats thinks that her beauty had destructive quality. He compares her beauty with a titan bow. As a titan can shoot cast the arrow at any time and anywhere, her beauty also can be fatal like that. It is the symbol of destructiveness. Although she looked peaceful and noble, fire of destruction was burning inside her. According to Yeats, such beauty in today's modern time is not natural good. Rather she is like a classical world woman who could cause war and destruction. Although she was solitary, alone, she was so powerful. At last, the poet again asks if there was the second Troy to be destroyed. This poem is both criticism and praise of Maud Gon's beauty. To express her extraordinary beauty, Yeats compares her with Helen of Troy. Yeats has beautifully merged his personal concern with political concern. The poem is a call for peace. It deals with the themes of love, peace, violence and revolution. Now, the last question that is question number 22. Joe Keller represents American dream of collecting wealth at all cost, ignoring all the ethics and morality. Explain. All My Sons Answer, All My Sons, is a three-act play written by an American playwright Arthur Miller. It deals with the tragic conflict between family loyalties and social responsibility. Joe Keller is the protagonist of this drama play. He represents American dream of collecting wealth at any cost ignoring all the ethics and morality. American dream is the concept that everyone can have progress, happiness and upward social mobility according to their capacity. Everyone can uplift their economic or social status by hard work. Everyone can enjoy their version of success and happiness. Joe Keller believes that American dream can be achieved only through money. So, he is ready to do anything for the sake of money. Joe Keller is a successful businessman but not much educated. He is a family man who thinks only about increasing his family happiness by earning much money. He wants to earn money by hook or crook. He runs a manufacturing plant with his partner Steve Diva. He is a money-minded person and a war profiteer. He supplies cracked airplane cylinders to the US Army during the Second World War due to which 21 fighter planes crashed and 21 pilots died. His own son committed suicide due to the shameful condition caused because of father's crime. Keller forgets his business ethics and morality. As a businessman he should have supplied the quality product, but he did not do so. Similarly, he deceived his own business partner Steve Diva by forcing him to supply those cracked cylinders and sending him to prison. Keller tells a lie that he did not tell Devere to supply those cylinders. He is a betrayer who betrayed his own nation and friend. He does not have time to think about his society and nation because he is running after money. Hence, we can say that Joe Keller represents American dream. He ignores all the ethics and moralities for the sake of wealth, money. The dramatist has criticized the American dream because it corrupts man. Thanks for watching this video till the end. Keep loving and watching this channel. Share the video among your students or friends.
Don't hesitate to drop comments. Love you. Take care. Bye bye.